welcome back. I know what I said uh, earlier, there's going to be a two-part episode, but I got that first uh, clutch side done pretty quick. So I think I'm going to try to dive into a little more detail when I work on the uh, brake side of my foot controls. I am missing a few parts, so I'm going to head down to the store uh, or the shop to find peg mounts that I can actually bolt to my new bracket, which is going to be right on here. And I said this is the new brake uh, reservoir. Same system, just chromed the shit out of, which I like. So, to give you a rough summary, this chunk of aluminum, or whatever the technical term is, aluminum, this was part of the original bracket. So, this is where the brakes would connect to, and there was an extension that connected to the frame. So that way you had the four controls. But since I extended my frame, I'm actually going to have to eliminate all this, but I just use this as a reference for my holes. And I'm going to mount, well not this roughly, but I'm going to mount my uh, foot controls, my new brakes, and my new reservoir onto this new bracket. And so, utilizing big old bolts, axle spacers, chop up the original brake, use a, use a new piece of rod, now I just gotta play the puzzle game. So these holes I'm probably gonna drill out quickly. And then I gotta figure out how, how how far out I want this. Because I want it so I can still put uh, spacers. So I have three points of contact making the brakes really sturdy. And then I'm gonna have to design how I want my brakes to actuate. So for example, Uh, make sure gravity works. Slide that right on top here. So this is going to have to get a pivot point, for example. So my brakes will be right about here. So when I push down on the lever, this is going to pivot around the bolt, pushing in a secondary tab, which we're probably going to make out of this, into the plunger running the brakes pushing the brake fluid down the line. All right, so I figured out the next part. So this is part of the original bracket. There was a peg and this is where the lever goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this portion out. So I'm gonna hit it with the angle, with the zip disc, cut deep right into there. And then I'll cut these off, kind of fat, kind of ground nice and smooth to be flush. And now I'm gonna hit this tab which I'm just realizing is actually, okay, not that thick. It just looks thicker. And I'm going to use this tab to mount on the outside, the forward portion, so I have somewhere I can bolt this up to. And that way, from the distance from here, up to here, and how high that lifts it, then I'm going to grab this style, Tyubins. And I'm going to make my spacers out of this, because stainless steel is not going to rust as bad. And I can run some bolts into the back, acorn nut on the top, so it still looks neat. And that way I'll have three points of contact to secure my brake reservoir. And at that point I'll, I'll know where I want it. And then I, can start, then I can start planning out where I'm going to put the pivot for the brake, the arm, and then the foot peg. ourselves our bracket setup. Uh, one thing I should have done, you probably saw in the video where you saw my uh, arc kind of pop, like pop, 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 pop. That's because I didn't take off some of the original uh, powder coating or some of the original uh, preservative, because this is a C metal right here. I'll explain that to you in a little bit. So it wasn't making a full clean connection, but you can see this weld isn't that bad. 
especially if you just give it a good scrub and that one you know looked big that one stuck to its old surface compared to that weld here which actually has a bit of a dividend but overall show the hold and like I said I can always take a grinder and kind of cut away that piece re-weld it and I got I'm going to weld on the inside as well just do a full surrounding but to hold it together for now Okay, now. Hello! <laughs> You're doing Can you say like, comment, subscribe? Job. Can you say like, comment, and subscribe? Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get back to you when we get to the next part, okay? <laughs> All right, so welcome back, Daddy. So, let me show you where I'm at so far. So, I you saw, just clipped off this. We end here, so this is gonna be the uh, pedal I'm gonna repurpose. When I mount up the brake rod here, I got this mounted. I haven't got the spacers in for that. I still got a few things that I want to test, but for right now, the uh, brake reservoir is stabilized. And now I am working on two things. I'm going to work on this junction here. Oh, uh, as you can see, this is the original. Let me get this out of here. There. This is here the original uh, lever. Don't need that shit anymore. Anyways, so the purpose of what I'm going to do up over here is going to cut this right out. Okay, this is the same outer diameter as my axle spacer that I'm purposing. And this is what's going to slide yipping on into here. I just used a simple 12 mil. To did a quick measurement from this junction to here. It's about one and three quarters. Ignore the two there, we don't need that. One three quarters, so I made just a little bit longer, so that way I can just hit with the uh, angle grinder or the bench bars and just kind of whittle it down to the point where it can sit flush, yep and on here, and it'll still fit in here, so it'll be long enough where I get the maximum amount of uh, leverage, but it won't be too long without it, without having to have a really funky, weird angled uh, foot pedal. Because if it's too long, my foot pedal won't go all the way down. If it's too short, it'll go way too far. So I figured start long, work my way short, just until I can find that happy point, which should only be maybe about, eh, what do you call that? Two inches, about two inches of uh, press, give or take. And obviously once this thing's all bled and primed, it'll actually add a lot more, it'll be half that. But, ah! So the point is I'm going to start cutting that out, grooving that out. So I'll probably cut straight across and just kind of trim the inside and cut out this whole unit so I can sit on here and just play with it on the angle. And I'm probably also going to just quickly tack up. This is hard to do with one hand. Yeah, I, I had this thing on a tripod. Tack that up here like so. And so that way, obviously this is going to be a little too long. If I have it tacked up, I can kind of just eyeball how high I want it and the angle I want it. Bring that up. How high, how low. I made this thing about 13 inches. Yeah, we don't need that. Made that about 13 inches. I'll plenty to work my way down. And I'll get back to you once I get this cut out. Okay, so let me show where I got so far. Eh? So right around here, you see this wee tab ground down on the bench grinder, hand files, this and that. Oh, they had the battery died on that one. But it actually slips right in there, right, connects right to the uh, pivot point I'm making. So once it applies pressure, there's still a perfect amount of gap. It's all right if it just kind of rubs against here, it's not going to cause da any damage. So all will be left is drilling another hole, going right to there, tossing the, call, the pin through there, which I think is actually still on my original brakes. Anyways, make a pin, go through there, probably just bolt it down, and yeah. Now, one thing I didn't take into consideration was that last set of brakes, I had maybe a cut hair of clearance from my exhaust. So this whole unit may be, not necessarily scratch, but heavily modified. Like I'm going to have to file down, make another hole and connect those so that way it can adjust. I don't know, but 
I just want to get some of this stuff assembled, but I have something coming up. So, uh, a special tool to kind of put all this together here soon. And then not to mention, I still got to figure out how I want to do my spacers. What I'm probably going to end up doing is chopping it off right below the uh, threads here. And just welding that up against here, right between those two dots I made. Oh, yeah, you can see it on the camera. There we go. Have it centered right in the middle there. And probably, yeah. And then I can chop this down to the proper length. But I'm going to keep it all together for now. Just until I can get where my uh, foot peg is going to go and how I'm going to set my brakes. Okay, so welcome back. I know it's been a, well for me it's been a couple of days since the last song. For you guys it's only been half a second. But right now, uh, I am now working on my new brake pedal lever. Which I have attached to my uh, extra uh, axle spacer. And what that's going to do is going to create the uh, sliding action I'm going, well it's going to look dirty. But it's going to create that sliding action I'm going to need to engage our brake lever. Brake pedal, brake lever. That's how I'm going to label them. I don't know what the technical term, but since it's been a few days since you last saw me, uh, I got myself a new toy. That's right, I got myself both a TIG and a stick welder. So that's going to help me so much when it comes to the heavier duty fabrication side of things. But let me just show you that, shall I? Still standing. So now I gotta get on this side. Or I like to put <sighs> when it comes to TIG welding, I find laying four tacks north, south, east, and west get enough stability where if I need to break it off, I can, but it's also stable enough that I can also maneuver around. If I drop it, it's not going to shatter, it's still going to take a little extra force to full on disassemble. All right, get it for another attack. Let me get you zoomed in on that nice tack. Oh, that's ah. I don't know if you can see that properly. But that tack will hold, so I'm just gonna put a few more tacks on and I'll throw you over towards the bike and show you how it looks. See you shortly. Okay, so now that we got that uh, brake lever arm. Now we gotta break, make the brake. I forget what the terminology again. I don't know. You got the pedal and the lever. What this junction is going to do is when I hit the lever, this arm is going to be pushing in the piston, pushing the fluids to the rear brakes. So all I have to do is take this and a diameter pin there, which I think I'll be lower, lower an eighth. We're going to drill bits out. I think it's probably less than a quarter. Drill it. Find the whole diameter for this. Hit center or at least mark out where I want it to sit roughly. Because it's going to sit tight in like that. You can see where I'm going with here now. And so I do just throw a pin and a carter pin through that. And this won't go anywhere.
All right, so. Now we got the hole drilled out. It's gonna be a really good example. Since the diameter, oh crap, making a mess. The diameter of the junction here is quarter inch. Perfect way to test it. So you slide the drill bit in there. Bada bang, bada boom. Obviously we're not gonna be using the drill bit, but you can see where it's going as a stand-in. So all I have to do is either just, I can literally probably just rivet in with some uh, some brass rod if I wanted to. I don't want to remove it anytime soon. Or hell, you can just use a nut and bolt and some Loctite. That actually might be a good idea. I might just use a nut and bolt, Loctite it in until I can probably salvage it in the original pin that has the uh, cotter pin that goes through it. So, now that we have it all together, I'm going to toss you guys back near the bike, this time for real. Show you how it all looks roughly assembled before I do any finalized tacks. Alright, see you in a second. Hey, welcome back. Alright, let's just see what it looks like. So, this is, a, this is just an elastic band because this arm isn't secured. Of course, you can't really see it too dark. Let me take out my flashlight here for you guys. Yeah. Uh, that's a flashlight button. There we go. There we go. Now we can see it better. So you see that arm isn't tacked into place. That's why I have the elastic band on the pedal there. But you can see when that lever goes down like a that, that's going to actuate the pump or the piston that pumps the brake fluid through the brake lines. So I just got to mark it here and here. And maybe just do a quick trace and then I can start tacking it up again for any before I do any finalized welds because like I said I only got a few tacks there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna look a little definitely looks industrial with a giant bolt on the end, but as long as it stops me, I'll be happy. Alright, All right, so now that we got the brakes all uh, tacked together, you can see all the actions needed are working together now. Let me try getting you guys a little closer. Take you off the stand. Hold on this up. So that's all tacked together. That got tacked together. What was happening was, if you saw in that video where I dipped my uh, tungsten, that uh, magnet was actually throwing that arc all over the place. That's why it was popping and didn't sound good because the magnet was throwing it off. So I just had to hold it with my finger. But you see, I got three tags on each side, so that's strong. So let me try to move my elbow. On. It does, it does the job. But I gotta conclude it for this episode. But if you can see right here, this bolt or this uh, actuating stud, whatever you want to call it, it's sticking really far out. And I do like this aesthetic, but I don't like how far out it is. So probably in the next video, because I still have to wait for my. Uh, Buddy to come over and help finish up all this shit. I'm probably gonna have to redesign this to be more aesthetically pleasing. I know this works, but I want to push the limits just a little bit. Try mix it a little, mix it up a little bit. And yeah, I'll get to you on the next episode there. And if you like being what like the way you've been watching, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell because we're still going to do a whole lot of crazy shit to this twin cam. I got some things lined up coming down soon, so hopefully I can get the thing at least ready for a test drive here soon. But yeah, I'm only a, in reality, I'm only a few steps away, but some of those steps, I want to do those right. So, thank you very much. See you in the next, test, uh, next episode. Bye.